So next up, we have a presentation from Northern Minerals with the ticker code NTU, a company focused on the development of their Browns Range Rare Earth Project. To tell us more, today we are joined by Executive Chairman Nick Curtis. Good afternoon, Nick. Um, so Jane, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I just want to give you a quick corporate overview. Perhaps we could just move to the first slide. Um, we are a dysprosium and terbium, not a rare earth play. They are, of course, rare earths, but we like to focus on the fact that our, the uniqueness of our deposit is that it is the highest concentration of dysprosium and terbium that we know of in the world today, and we think those are very exciting met metals for the future. We are developing the high-grade Wolverine deposit, which is part of our system, uh, and we are a almost shovel-ready project. We're not an exploration company at this stage. We've pivoted away from being an exploration group into uh, focusing on the near-term development of a mine. Uh, the large uh, concentration of heavy rare earths uh, does differentiate us from other rare earth projects uh, in focusing on the neodymium and presidymium. Both are required within the magnet supply chain, which is a high growth uh, uh, value in the rare earth chain. And we think we play a unique part in the development of particularly the non-China market for rare earths. Um, the stats there speak for themselves. So the investment highlights, we've refocused the company. It's been 16 years in operation, essentially as an exploration company, but in 2015, it did a feasibility study on Wolverine and it moved into a trial plant. That has given us an enormous base for uh, our future, but we refocused on saying, okay, we want to be a miner. We're going to stay with concentration of, of material. That is because we can do it in the volume to become the leading and a dominant player in the in the supply of dysprosium and terbium. The market's about 1,800 tonnes. We will be producing about 400 tonnes, making us a big player in the dysprosium and terbium market. We can do this and say it's real because of our partnership with iLuca. We've entered into a very strong partnership with iLuca around their any uh, site development for a rare earth project. We have sold them all of our concentrate production and we will literally be trucking the material down to their any refinery and dropping it off there for their processing into the future. The demand for the dysprosium and terbium couldn't be better as the tailwinds for decarbonisation and electrification grow and the applications that actually underpin that those tailwinds actually require a permanent magnets made of, of uh, rare earths as the optimal product on the way through. I'll come back to the market opportunity in some more detail. Um, we, we understand our geology. Uh, we believe we've got the highest grade DYTB ore body globally. Um, we have a lot of data from the previous work and that has given us a lot of confidence to move forward. We've all, some of us in the management team have all been through a development phase in particularly rare earths and other metals before. And so we know what's ahead of us in terms of building and constructing this project, but we are well on our way to building a real mining operation. The market opportunity is in a very specific technical factor. That is that as we grow the market for uh, wind turbines and electric vehicles, a necessary condition of achieving net zero and decarbonisation, we actually have a higher, higher and higher demand for the optimal magnets to drive offshore wind farms and high performance electric vehicles. The optimal magnets are neodymium presidymium magnets, but the neodymium presidymium magnets don't operate unless the temperature conditions are right for them to operate. That is to say, they lose their magnetic quality at about a 70 degrees C. As you go beyond that, you simply don't have a magnet. The only way known to fix that is to put a combination of between four and 8% and dysprosium and terbium into the magnet alloy. Uh, that dysprosium and terbium is a secret source that makes those magnets work well in those high temperature applications. Currently, 90% of that material is produced from China and Myanmar. And the Myanmar and China supply chains have been very poor in their environmental. In the case of Myanmar, I can imagine in terms of the social uh, uh, engagement there, that is not a sustainable supply chain to build high performance vehicles and wind farms to uh, alleviate the rest of the world's 
uh, needs in terms of carbon minimization. So we believe we have a key role in cleaning up and ensuring that particular critical supply chain. And out of Iluca, just to make this point further, out of Iluca's plant with their monazite and their neodymium and presidymium and our DYTB, we will have the only place in the world where the components are all there to make the alloy of magnets required for that supply chain. So we're excited by that opportunity. Um, the Northern Minerals proposition is one that we are building this mine on a base of knowledge that's quite unique for a junior. There's been 16 years of exploration. There's been three years of pilot plant. We've produced over a thousand tonnes of concentrate. We're not going further than concentrate. We're delivering the rest to the chemical plant that is in the Niaba. We know the concentrate production process from tried and proven experience. And we are uh, therefore quite certain about the production capacity of what we have. The geological system is well understood. We have a lot of exploration. Um, we uh, have a clear understanding of the structural controls. We have all our necessary uh, primary approvals in place, obviously including native title and all ministerial statements required to get going. Uh, and now we are in the process of developing our feasibility study, uh, which should be finished in November or to December. And from that, we look, we're looking at first half of next year uh, to get to FID and commence construction for a 2026 production. The Aluka Supply Agreement is very important to us. They are excited about it. So are we in terms of getting us going because of the factor that I mentioned before that we have a complementarity in terms of the demand for rare earths. Um, they have given us uh, a big leg up in helping us with financing by engaging both in the offtake contract with a base price uh, that they're willing to pay us for our concentrate measured in dollars per kilo of uh, rare earths. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, they have participated in the financing uh, pre-FID. They put $15 million in as convertible note and $5 million in as equity. And they are um, committed to participating in the equity FID funding. So it's a true partnership with them. It goes through the due diligence process. We share technical information uh, and uh, we are getting a lot of benefit from the skills and capacity that Iluca have in this area uh, as well. Um, we do have the capacity to sell excess production to third parties if Iluca doesn't purchase it, but they do have a right of first refusal. We don't anticipate that event will happen. We think we really have a long-term, very strong partnership with the Iluca stable. We obviously have to get this funded. Uh, we are well down the track with uh, uh, funding for the project. It's about $500 million that we've announced that this project will cost. Uh, that will come in no small part from debt. We hope uh, around the 300 uh, odd from debt. Uh, we obviously are looking at the government agencies around that. NAIF have uh, expressed their willingness to consider this project. There is a strategic assessment process that you have to go through with NAIF. We're pleased that we've passed that strategic assessment process and they've put us on the list of projects which they are now going to move through a credit uh, evaluation of. We are confident that we will get there with NAIF, but obviously it's subject to the credit process itself. Um, but uh, they're a very good partner for us to uh, engage with in terms of the financing. We've also, with NAIF, engaged with Export Finance Australia. Export Finance Australia did the $1.25 billion loan to Iluca for the Eniaba refinery. They know the space. They are also positive about the strategic value of the project. Obviously, they're reserving their judgment until the credit is, uh, assessment is fully complete on their debt participation. But we believe they are also a likely partner. We are talking to banks about that as well. Uh, from that, we already have Iluca's 50 odd million dollars uh, commitment with respect to the equity funding at FID. And we believe by the time we get to the point where we have a full DFS uh, funding, debt funding in place, a commitment from Iluca, the balance of the equity should be quite manageable. So that's the financing plan. So we're moving one specific asset we've got, Wolverine, within a geological system. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, into production. Wolverine is the one with the open pit mine. It's, it's a quarry, it's a small mine, but it's produced, as I say, a thousand tons of concentrate, has been working now for three years. Um, the, the Wolverine operation will be in production 2026, which uh, is in line with when the Eniaba plant for Iluka should be finished. 
We think we have de risked key elements of the project, most particularly with our supply and funding agreement. Um, and uh, we think it's the right judgment for us to stay upstream and be a miner and not move downstream into the chemical side of the plant. An experience I had with Linus, which ultimately went very well, but was a very complicated growth path for a junior company. So we're avoiding that this time and partnering with Iluka to take the downstream leg of the project. So the exciting part about this is we are in a region with xenotime mineralization expressing itself across the granite dome. Uh, we have found in the shear zone system that's represented at Wolverine, one roughly 25 meter wide by about 300 meter strike length, open at depth shear, uh, shear system that's vertically uh, dipping and um, and is actually very amenable to the mining method we're going to use there, which is a um, uh, sub-level retreat mining method. Uh, and that will form a production for about 4,000 tonnes a year of REO, of which our 10% roughly uh, dysprosium and terbium will be about 400 tonnes of dysprosium and terbium production a year, a significant market share. The total resource there is about 60,000 tonnes of, of REO, giving us quite an abundant mine life there it's open at depth but we think the region has significant we know the region has significantly more surface expressions of xenotime mineralization that we need to follow up we've stopped following them up actively at the moment whilst we concentrate on getting the first mine into production the plan is to build the mine at wolverine but mine further mined and bring them into the wolverine plant on that region that we have 500 kilometers of which is in the northern territory we call that uh, sorry is in western australia we call that essentially the Browns Range project, but a substantial portion of which is across into the Northern Territory. Uh, we've got some several thousand square kilometers of ground around there as well. Um, and we are very excited about the long-term exploration uh, potential. But in the meantime, we're in that very difficult stage of transition for a junior company to go from uh, exploration, pre-development concepts into production and we're excited about actually doing that over the next 18 months. Thank you. That's really the proposition that we've got. Uh, and uh, we really think we'll be the next rare earth producer in Australia. Nick, that's a great presentation. I'm going to jump into some questions now. So when do you expect results from further drilling at Wolverine? Look, we have had a, a recent drilling campaign at Wolverine to explore the depth of Wolverine. We've announced some of those. Uh, it is clear that the ore body is continuing. We didn't find the secret stash, or the, the, sort of, the sort of jewel box down there that makes us want to change our mining plan. We're going to go from surface down gradually, uh, but it does show that there's significant extension at about the same grade. Um, we are going to do further drilling, but most of it's going to be infill drilling of the ore body itself. So I wouldn't expect anything too dramatic. We'll announce that in the course of announcing the feasibility study and the quarterly report that we put in. Wonderful. And can you brief, uh, please touch briefly on the environmental and community engagement that the company's been involved in? Uh, yes, we have a very good relationship with the Jaru uh, community and uh, people up there. They're a recently determined native title group and the Jaru PBC is fully engaged with what we're doing. Uh, we have a heritage clearance from just about all the areas we need. We're still moving through and cooperating with the community for the appropriate ARC and ethno heritage surveys. Um, and so we're, we actively participate, want, want and want to participate in that. We are working around some issues that have been identified properly. And I think we have a cooperative engagement there. The environmental side, we have all the primary permits in place that we need. It's not to say there mightn't be some minor secondary uh, permits, obviously, as we go into construction, but we have all the primary permits we need. Um, so this is truly a, um, a, a ready to mine uh, operation. Wonderful, Nick. Well, once again, if we've missed any questions, please feel free to reach out via the contact details, which can be found at the bottom of the ASX releases. But Nick, thanks again for your time. Thank you.